Welcome to The Broken. I am Kevin Rose. I'm Dan Heward, also known as Double D. This is our first episode ever. Sure. This is a little different than your average computer show. This is a little underground. It's a little shady. It's a little borderline illegal, but we like to call it The, the Broken. Broken. Let's get things started off right. This yeah. is how we like to do it. Uh, oops, there we are. Paper bag style. <laughs> and uh, cheers to that. Yeah. Mm, let's, uh, let's give this a little go. Mmm. 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 It needs another sip. That's all right. That's all right. We got a great show for you today. Today we are going to be showing you wireless hacking. We're going to be showing you wireless cracking. If you want to crack those wireless WAPs out there, we got a lot of good stuff. What else we got going on in the show? We have we have Ramsey with a hacker tip. Ramsey with a hacker tip. Ramsey is awesome. You're going to love him. He's coming up in just a couple minutes. We also have something that's really cool. We're going to show you how to get free pizza for life using social engineering. This is really cool. You're definitely going to want to check it out. It's coming up. But let's start things off with a little wireless hacking. Let's do it. And another drink. Mm. Yeah. I'm right outside of San Francisco, borderline Silicon Valley. What does that mean? That means tens of thousands of wireless access points that are ready to be hacked. Today I'm going to show you two programs. One, NetStumbler, it's going to discover the access points. And number two, AirSnort, it's going to allow us to crack the access points. So let's jump in the car and let's do some hacking. So we're in the car war driving, and I'm here with Double D, of course. What's up? And we have found an insane amount of wireless networks. How many networks have we run across? Well, we've been driving around for about half an hour, about 15. About 15. And the cool thing is that most of those are unencrypted, so we can just click on them and go right in. Check this out. This is Network Stumbler. This is the program that we use to find all of the wireless access points. And we fired it up, and you see all these little points right here? This is the actual signal strength that we're looking for, so we can find the best one con to connect to. Now, what I don't understand, though, there's all these little dips and breaks... What's going on with well, that? The breaks are when we lose the actual connection to the wireless access point. You see this little gap right here? That means that we lost connection for a few minutes. Oh. Now, the reason this happens is because if you check this out here, we're using a Linksys wireless card. That's mine, I think. Yeah, it's yours, but it sucks. <laughs> we don't go with the Linksys. Linksys really sucks when it comes to finding these access points. Check out cards from Orinoco. Go to their website. They have a, a pro card that's really good. And the pro card actually on the back of the, the card right here has a little hole, and you can plug in external antennas that you can just drape right outside your window. Oh, awesome. So you get better connection. Better connection, and you'll find more wireless access points that way. Awesome, awesome. So now that NetStumbler has found the connection, how do you actually connect? Well, once you've found four or five connections, or however many, mm -hmm. you're going to want to double-click on a little icon, the actual wireless uh, network connection icon in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, mm -hmm. and it's going to bring this up right here. If you take a look here, here's the different wireless networks. You can see there's about four or five of them here that we have available, and we can actually click on these and then connect to any one of these wireless networks. Now, one of them says Linksys, so I think it's probably safe to say that... Uh Unencrypted. Yeah. <laughs> if you're keeping your SSID as Linksys, that's not a good thing. Most people are going to know that to get in, it's admin, admin is the username, password for the administrative console. Um, that happens all the time. We found a lot of those so now, far. Now, for those that do encrypt them that are other than Linksys, right. how do you get past that? Well, if they're using web encryption, the way we're going to get past it is we're going to use something that's called uh, AirSnort. And AirSnort is going to capture all these packets and then eventually crack that password. Mm -hmm. In fact, let's do that right now. I'm going to shut this machine down. We're going to put in Linux. We're going to fire up AirSnort. And let's crack some passwords. Awesome. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left Check it out, Nopix STD, one of my favorite distros of Linux I'll tell you why Download the ISO image, check it out, burn it to a CD And then throw it into your laptop what you do is you don't even have to install Linux because it automatically just comes right up, boots and runs right off the CD. 
After you do that, check this out. I'm going to fire up Air Snort right here. What Air Snort is going to do is it's going to capture all those packets of information and it's going to try and break the encryption. Eventually, it'll break the encryption. Cool. So, is there any like advanced configurations you have to do for the cards? Well, what you have here is check this one out here. This is a uh, Linksys card, which is the one we were talking about earlier. Not yeah. so good, but good in this case because it's running the Prism 2 chipset. Prism 2, very generic chipset. A lot of different card companies use it. This is going to work perfect with Air Snort right out of the box. Also, the Cisco cards work great with Air Snort as well. But the one thing, the Orinoco cards, they need a patch driver. So you have to download a separate driver. But the cool thing is, is that Nopix STD has that patch driver right on the disk. Okay, so out of the box, there might be some configurations, but probably minor. Very minor. I mean, even to run the patch, all you have to do is launch a shell as root, run the patch, and it's going to work just fine. Cool. Now, as far as breaking the encryption goes, it's going to take some time. Normally, either a couple days or a couple weeks. But what you can do is you can save your session. That's going to save all that information, then come back to it at a later time. So if you're on your lunch hour or something like that, like, like I do, right. then you can then you can come back and eventually break that encryption and uh, get cracking. That's all there is to it. Okay, so what I don't understand is I was at my buddy's house and we tried for like two days to break this web encryption. What happened? Nothing happened. No. Well, what happens is there has to be a certain number of what's called interesting packets that Air Snort captures. Let me give an example. Let's say you're at a business and there's four full-time employees surfing the net via wireless. Okay. They're going to generate approximately about a million packets a day of information, just standard web packets going across the, the wire. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens is, is that during that time, they're going to generate what's called interesting packets or, or weak keys, as Air Snort calls them. Now, Air Snort has to have about 3,000 weak keys in order to crack the web encryption. Now, Let's say there's four full-time employees. They're only going to generate about 120 weak keys per day. So that's why it's taken so long, because since there's only so many per day, you have to do it for many other days. After exactly. That. And how many people were on your friend's network? It was just my friend's network. If it's just your friend, then you're not going to near generate a million packets a day. So it's going to take like a couple of weeks. So that's why I said in the segment, it can either be just a couple of days if you have like, let's say a business that has 20 or 30 people accessing the wireless network at one point, mm -hmm. or it can be a couple of weeks in your friend's case where it's just one person. I see. Okay. Cool. What's, uh, what's coming up on the show? Mm. <laughs> coming up, we have Ramsey. Oh, Ramsey yeah. with the hacker tip. This is Ramsey. <laughs> You're going to see him. He's awesome. Check this out. Hi everyone, my name is Ramzi. Today I will teach you how to download Whereas. The software I use is Kaza, the K++. Edition, I like Kaza. Why? Light, because it is ad free and no spyware. Okay, let's find somewhere as. I will search for Bunzi Buddy. See, now I download, it's free, but be careful, some software costs money. Thanks everyone, I am Ramzi, that is your hacker tip of the day. Peace to the broken crew you all lead. Have a nice day. Ramzi, thank you very much for that hacker tip. <laughs> you lead, Ramsey. You lead too. <laughs> so what we got coming up? We have we're, we're talking social engineering, and what that means is think about it. Social means in using your social skills, and engineering means to work in ways and get information that you wouldn't normally be able to get. So what we're going to show you today is we're going to show you how to get some free pizza. It's very basic, but it gives you the good groundwork, good concept of exactly how social engineering works. That's great. So uh, let's check it out. It's 12.37 p.m. What does that mean? It's lunchtime. Right over my shoulder is a pizza. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to wait outside the pizza place and wait for someone to go inside. I'm going to follow them in acting like I'm with that person. Now the most important piece of information that we're looking for is their name. So we'll listen and see what name they place the order under. Let's do it. Yeah, um, let's get 
a large uh, thin press. Um, half a <laughs> and uh, half uh, Canadian bacon and pineapple. Okay, I got his name, got what he ordered, got his information. Let's go make a phone call. So we're back at the house, phone in hand. Now what we have to do is we have to outsmart our target. And in this case, our target is the manager of the local pizza shop. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of paper and I've written down all the crucial information that I need to know when I'm on the phone. That's the time, the date that it happened, the product, in this case it was the pizza, and then the problem that I'm having with the product that calls for a new product, which I'm going to make a complaint about the pizza and ask for a new one. So here's what we have to do. There's a couple ways we can approach it. You're going to get on the phone, and the first thing you want to do is you want to get past the gatekeeper. Now, the gatekeeper is the person that's going to answer the phone, you know, that employer that works the front desk or something like that. Get past her, him or her. In this case, it's probably going to be a her since we've already seen her. And we're going to want to go straight to the manager. So first thing, right off the bat, can I speak with your manager? After we do that, we've got to start talking to the manager, present a problem, and then ask for a solution. Say, well, what can you do for me? And then if you don't like the solution, if they say, we're just going to give you a discount, push a little harder until we can actually get the pizza that we want. So this will apply to all different types of social engineering. Let's give it a try. Yes, yeah, so can I please speak with the manager, please? Sure. Thank you. Thank you for holding. How can I help you? Yes, uh, I was in here just about a half hour ago and picked up a pizza. Um, and the toppings, that the bacon that you put in there is like extremely rock hard. It's like so hard I don't even want to give my brother some. I was eating a slice of it and it could probably like chip his tooth. It's that bad. Did you guys, uh, do you know if that's like a, it was cooked too long or what, what might cause that? Is it for a pickup or a delivery? It's for a pickup. It's a pickup? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to call and let you guys know about it just because I wouldn't want anybody okay. chipping it. It was the bacon? Yeah, it was, it was, uh, I got a half and a half pizza. One was Hawaiian on one side with like the, um, pineapple and the other half was, it's not, it's not called meat lovers, but it's equivalent to that. I don't, what do you guys call it? I, I can't remember. It, I don't know if it was, it, yeah, it was and uh, it's got like big thick chunks of bacon, but they're like little rocks almost. They're like really rock hard. I mean, it's definitely bacon. It's just really rock hard. All right. Okay. Um, so I just want to let you guys know about that. Is there any way I could get some type of comp towards a half a pizza or something that the pizza that I, I'm not going to eat? Or um, did you want to come back down and get something? Or could I? That would be awesome if I could. What? Uh What would you like? I'll just take uh, the, the Hawaiian kind of with the, not the, I know you guys don't have Canadian bacon, but the um, just ham, and ham, ham and pineapple, yeah, exactly. It was under the name of, of uh, uh, the girl that had taken our order at the front counter, I believe, when we came to pick it up, but I'm not sure if, if we told them or not, but. So you just want the whole thing to be ham and pineapple? That'll do it. Okay. All right. So how long shall I wait then? Maybe about 10, 15 minutes. Thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Mmm. Free pizza. If you want to know more about social engineering, I recommend this book right here. This is The Art of Deception by Kevin Mitnick. It's an awesome book filled with all kinds of good stories and information. He's really the master at this kind of stuff, so definitely check it out. That's it for this first edition, and uh, I'm Kevin Rose. Double D. This is Double D in the house, and we're having a good time. Share this file, spread it with your friends, pirate it, we don't care. 
Do what you will with it. With a broken. Till next time. This is your hacker tip of the day. Please, peace to the fuck you, Kevin. <laughs> Anyone would feel badly. You are sadly mistaken. I'm here right side to outside. Let's start that again. Definitely check it out. Something worth checking out. I just said that twice. <laughs> I'm getting drunk. <laughs> okay. So, uh... <laughs> if you want to know more about social... Ready? If you want to know about... If you want to know more... I'm getting drunk. Okay, here we go. Okay, ready? You ready? <laughs> we should just play this. Like, <laughs> We should totally play this. Okay. <laughs> You want to know more? You want? To <laughs> 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 we're we're gonna definitely play this. This is, good, this is gonna be a mess. Okay. You want to know more about social engineering stuff? <laughs> We've had a good time. We hope you share this file. Put it on Kazaa. Put it on LimeWire. Give it to your whore. There. Not to your whore. <laughs> Damn, this is good. Fuck. <laughs> Hello again, my fellow hackers, Biatches. I am Ramzi. Right, thank you. Dan. Yeah, you haven't started. Yeah, but you, you can't laugh. Fuck, he, he's not good to work in the TV. Kick him, fire him, guys. <laughs>